I hope you don't mind that I am repeating this homily which I delivered on the same day of Friday after Ash Wednesday last year. Minsan, naimbitahan ako ng isang kaibigan sa isang birthday party para sa nakababata niyang kapatid na lalaki who had a final stage cancer na talagang metastasized. They wanted the party to be really festive. Naghanda sila talaga. Because they were aware that it could be their brother's last birthday. But it so happened that on that day and right at that time, when lunch was about to, be, to begin, his brother had a cardiac arrest in his bedroom and he died in the company of a caregiver. He died on the very day nung birthday niya after a long, difficult battle with cancer. Eh dahil ni-request niya na kung pwede, wag na siyang i-resuscitate or intubate they did not even rush him to the hospital anymore. And you know, the whole festive mood was suddenly turned into gloom. Ni hindi siya nakantahan ng happy birthday. Ayong cake ready na. And the candles were lighted already. He wasn't even able to blow them off. The party music was replaced by loud wailing in the house by the family members who were so overwhelmed by the painful loss. It was very evident how precious he was to them. At yung mesa, punong-puno ng pagkain, masasarap na pagkain. Walang kumakain. Nobody was touching it. When you lose someone very dear to you, parang you lose your appetite also. No matter how hungry you are, you just cannot get yourself to enjoy the food. Ito ba yung fasting? Hindi. This is what they call Grieving. Grieving. Tandang-tanda ko nga eh. Yung tiyan ko, kumukulo. <laughs> My stomach was grumbling dahil gutom talaga ako. And we were holding our plates already. But I couldn't get myself to eat when I saw the family grieving you realize that eating is not just about filling your stomach, you know. It's also about enjoying the company, the people that you break bread with. Paano ba ako mag enjoy in this moment of pain for the family? Maybe fasting is related to the occasional deliberate refusal to touch the food. At that moment, I wasn't touching the food. Not because I was not hungry. I was hungry. Not because I did not want to partake of the food. But because I had decided to partake in the grieving of the family. Hindi kaya ito yung ini-explain ni Jesus sa kanyang mga disciples. In today's gospel, when he asks, Pwede daw ba na mag-fasting yung mga bisita while the bridegroom is with them? And then he says, no. It is when the bridegroom is taken away from them that they will fast. I was invited to be a guest for a feasting. But the situation turned it 
into fasting. Pero wala namang nag-oblige sa amin na mag-fasting. In fact, I remember yung kaibigan ko, he was really asking me, kumain naman daw ako after I blessed his dead brother. But when he could not get me to eat, ang ginawa niya, nagbalot siya ng dalawang piraso ng chicken galantina at nilagay niya sa bag ko after I embraced his grieving mother and took leave. Our first reading today is from the prophet Isaiah. And the prophet's criticism of the kind of ritual fasting that the people were doing. The prophet begins by expressing Israel's lament to God. Why do we fast, Lord, and you do not see it? You do not even notice it. And the prophet replies to the same question with another question. And now he is speaking on God's behalf. Ang sabi niya, sa palagay niyo ba, natutuwa ako sa ginagawa ninyo? Do you really think this is the kind of fasting that I am asking you to do? Well, nung nag-start tayo sa Ash Wednesday, I mentioned to you, that fasting can be a meaningless exercise, especially kung wala siyang context. Isaiah enumerates the many situations that can provide a meaningful context to the ritual of fasting by making ourselves aware of the sufferings that other people are going through. And among them, he mentions those who are bound unjustly, those who are carrying a heavy burden, those who are hungry, those who are victims of injustice, the homeless, those who are stripped naked by misfortunes. Feeling the pain of others as your own. Ang maramdaman mo, ang sakit na nararamdaman ng iba, to see in other people your fellow sufferers and to express solidarity with them. Katulad ng pinananawagan ni Pope Francis sa ating lahat para sa mga taga Ukraine. Kanina lang nakita akong video, talagang nabagbag yung damdamin ko. Mga tangke, mga armored cars patungo sa Kiev, hinaharangan ng mga civilians. Umiiyak sila, nagmamakaawa sila. Pero malupit ang mga sundalo. Ibinalik sa alaala ko ang nangyari in 1986. Nung naglabasan ng mga Pilipino, humarap sa mga tangke at mga baril. Pero doon, nanalo tayo. Madali lang makalimot ang tao. Fasting is related to feasting. Ang difference lang ng fasting and feasting, isang letra lang eh. Letter E. Fasting and feasting. Palagay ko, we can assign a meaning to letter E. Empathy. Empathy. Yung kakayahang maramdaman, ang nararamdaman ng kapwa. The fasting can eventually turn into feasting only after we have expressed empathy. When we have made ourselves fully aware of what other people are going through. When we have refused to allow other people to suffer alone. Only empathy. Only empathy can enable us to quietly express an assurance. Narito ko para sa iyo. 
I'm here with you. Hindi ka nag-iisa. You are not alone. I feel your pain. I suffer with you. And I will wait for the right moment to be able to celebrate, to feast again with you. For the moment, I have decided to be hungry with you. This is also probably what God meant when He revealed Himself to Moses in Midian, in that burning bush. Sabi ni God, I have seen the affliction of my people. I have heard their cry. I know well how much they're suffering. And therefore, I have come down to rescue them. Yung sinabi ni God in the burning bush is just verbalizing what Moses himself was actually going through. Diba si Moses, he was enjoying a good life in Egypt, in the palace of the Pharaoh. But after witnessing the affliction and oppression of the Hebrew slaves, parang hindi na niya ma-enjoy yung luxurious life anymore. And so he left the comforts of the palace and he went into the desert to pray and to fast only to meet God only to be told by God to go back to Egypt and this time to be an agent of their liberation only those who can fast with those who suffer can become agents of liberation only those only they can eventually bring consolation to those who are grieving. Those who can, who can healing to those who, can, who suffer in their woundedness. And light to those who are in darkness. Only they can turn their fasting into feasting. 